this week's tutorial will have you using straight line analysis to find planes of the figure. You will, as always, you will first find your limits by finding the proportion of your entire figure as seen here. Once you have your overall proportion, you're going to use your short side or what we call the unit of one to figure out the proportion of the C, B, and the A of the figure. As you can see here, the C going from the top of the pelvis to the bottom of the feet is around one to two, meaning the unit of one fits into it two times. Then we go up to the torso area from the top of the pelvis to the top of the shoulders. That is roughly a one to one. And then from the top of the shoulders to the head is about one to three quarters. It's important that you get this down and understand that using this will help you capture accurate proportions of the figure. Now begins the tutorial process. So as always, I visualize those points on my page before using my pencil. This calibrates my arm, calibrates my eye, making sure they're working together, convincing myself Using it across, I plot my four points, my highest, my lowest, my left, and my right, and I box those in. Seen here, I'm making an adjustment, a correction, because I'm, I find that my window is a little too long. With only a little bit of time invested in the drawing, I can easily make that correction and check it. That's important for this state of the drawing. The next thing we need to do is find our A, B, and C. Starting with the C, we're going to use our short side or our unit of one to find the size relationship within our window. So using the unit of one, I discover it is roughly one to two. I indicate it here and I draw that window. So this is C, the proportion of C being one to two. B is one to one and A is one to three and a quarters. This is gonna help me find accurate proportions as I work. Once I have that, I have a, a good start really, so I can begin to intercross and add more points for reference and measurement so I can add planes and contour. As you can see, much of my focus is really on the figure and not so much the arms that hang to the sides too far. Um, I'm doing this because I want to get the proportion right and sometimes arms are difficult when they're hanging out in space. So that's something I'll add later. I highly recommend you do the same, unless of course the arms are really close to the side. So now is the intercross method, very similar to what we've been doing. I'm adding more points as I go. Remember, it doesn't have to be right, it gets you started. You're gonna make those corrections after. So you can see I'm adding the arms after I figured out, but again, very roughly. Don't get too detailed at this stage. Stay very basic, especially in the legs where I'm just looking for rectangles and, and uh, diamonds and triangles as I work. Here the camera stopped working, so it missed a little bit of the stages, but all I did was begin to start using straight line analysis to create general shapes based on what I observed. So starting at the head, just trying to find big shapes, huge shapes, and then seeing what shapes are happening, where they're turning, um, looking for triangles, looking for diagonals and angles as I work from top to bottom. This should feel familiar to you as you've done it with your hand and your self-portrait. 
Now you just have a lot more forms to work with. Don't hide behind or neglect any part of the drawing. The most common areas uh, people tend to not draw or hide from are hands and arms and, and feet. Remember, drawing from observation is a process in which you are exploring and experimenting to understand form. Take an analytical approach to drawing. Try to find what the form is doing and how the form is constructed. I'm not looking at individual pieces. I'm looking at general shapes and where those points relate in space. So what I'm going to do is expand the drawing to the bottom and show you my thought process behind this hand. So I'll, I'll scale it up for you to see and just I'm looking at basic general planes and how they move to construct this hand. If it helps, squint your eyes and just start to see shapes and see how that hand is constructed. I'm not looking at the individual fingers. I'm not worried about that. I'm worrying about general form to help capture the proportion and accurate planal changes. Throughout this drawing process, I've done a little bit of correction. And remember, correction is the most important part. So once I finish this arm here, I'm going to go throughout the form and adjust and correct as I go. Remember to use that unit of one continuously. Even here, I can find that short side, that unit of one, and figure out the distance from the torso to the edge of that hand, just like so. That's going to help me see that, especially when you don't have a lot to work with uh, vertically. Now that I have most of my form drawn, I know that it's not entirely correct, but I used all this experimentation from the get-go. Um, one of the logics I use is draw first, measure second, and that's what I'm doing here. So I'm using negative space analysis and reference lines to make sure that my forms are indeed correct. I'm comparing the negative space and and really noticing a mistake here, so I'm adjusting it. Keeping those straight lines, I can start to get a more accurate angle. Follow along through the rest of the drawing as you see how much I use reference lines and correction to adjust and find more specific angles and more accurate planar analysis. Remember to compare and adjust points in space by using your string vertically and horizontally and drawing that as a reference line on your page. By using those comparisons you're really able to see and take over in observation as opposed to assuming what is there. Remember, we have to shut our brains off and stay in observation as we work to truly capture the accurate planes and system of form of the human figure.